Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 Co-op. It's my turn this time and we got a rescue mission. Rescue VIP from Advent Cell, Operation Soaring Stroke. And here's our squad. We got a Grenadier, Specialist, Assault, Gunner, Sharpshooter and Rogue. Let's go then! You know, switching to this after playing Long War 2 a lot feels a little bit weird. <laughs> it feels too easy. And I've been playing a lot of Long War 2. As you probably know. Alright, well, let's move. Chris can scout ahead a little bit. There's the cell. It's pretty close. Well, let's take a look. Yep, here's the first group. Codex, Breacher and Gunslinger. Elite Gunslinger. Alright, let's just move a little bit closer. We can ambush them on the next turn. Come on, people. Do you want steady weapon for Tobias? Yeah, I think so. Let's do that. Steady weapon. Any more good cover around here? Yep, we got some full cover. And Eva. Good enough. Hopefully they won't move away from us too much. Yeah, they are moving towards us, actually. Which will make our job easier. Come on. So, what's the best way to do this? We could skull mine one of them. It's not a bad idea. Probably the Breacher, he has two armor. But who's going to open the ambush? Let's have a look. 78% chance. Yeah, 10% defense. What about Tobias? He could take the first shot. That's a granted hit at least. So that works. Anyone else? Not much point wasting a grenade for this. Alright, let's take a shot with Tobias. No overwatch because we got other tools to use. We'll take a shot at the Gunslinger. We got 0% chance to crit on the Breacher. He's immune to crits, apparently. Alright, let's take a shot at the Gunslinger. Nice. Who's keeping score? And we'll melee this. the Codex. Hopefully it will move away a little bit. So that we'll do more damage with flesh. That's the plan. Yep, it did move away slightly. Okay. So now... Brian can attack the Codex. He won't actually kill it, but it will be low on health. Well, unless he gets a crit, that was 25% chance. He will not get a crit, that's fine. It will clone and lose some health. So that should be 3 health, I think. Yep, and 2 health on the other one. So now, let's mine... Let's call mine the Breacher. Sure, why not? We can do that. Don't miss. Nice. Let's see, 49% chance to get some intel. And we got it. Good job. Rip. And now we just kill the Codex. Let's see, anyone with stock? I don't think so, actually. Chris has stock, but that's just the basic stock, not advanced stock. Yeah, we don't actually have stock on anyone. Well, other than Chris for one damage, but that's not good enough. That's one down. Now, can we kill the other one? 
Let's see. Reliably, that is. Maybe. What about Eva? She can take a shot. Alright, let's take a shot. I could always use a grenade, but that would be a huge waste. Let's not do that. Nope, missed. Yeah, I don't really want to use Chris. Because if he misses, it will do one damage. Let's just kill it with a grenade. We lose concealment, but oh well, whatever. There, down it goes. It will destroy the loot, but that's okay. First group down. Let's move on. We got 14 turns. Lots of time. And here comes another one. Muton and Viper. Well, hi there. Can we melee the Muton? I think we're close enough. We are. Or we could melee the Viper and then flank the Muton. Yeah, we can definitely flank the Muton. Let's just do that. First, we'll shred it. Hopefully. Nope. That was a pretty bad shot right there. You don't need ammo, you just need to not miss. Tobias. Yeah, 30%. His chance to hit is way too low right now. I suppose we could use a grenade. Feels like a bit of a waste. Hold on, can we hit both the Muton and the Viper with one grenade? No, we can't. We could always freeze one of them, which also feels like a bit of a waste. It's that one missed shot. This would have been much different if we didn't miss the first shot. Let's take a shot with Chris. Yeah, only 55%. Alright. One damage. Yay. <laughs> This is awkward. Even if I melee the Viper, there's no guarantee we'll kill it. We would have to get a crit or do maximum damage. What if we don't kill it? We can always use Thomas, I guess. But he doesn't have combat protocol, which is annoying. Let's try okay, to hit the Viper. Yeah. Come on, Thomas. There we go. Now we just need two more damage. And I'll probably freeze the Muton. I think so, yeah. We could also kill the Viper with a grenade. That would be a granted kill. Now, let's save the grenade for something slightly more useful. We'll just kill the Viper with melee. Oh, it's actually stunned from the bolt caster, but now it's dead. Alright, and now we can freeze the mutant. We got two frost bombs, so might as well do it. Oh yeah, and Tobias. He needs to dash, he's way too far from our squad. You know, I got so used to the Grace mechanic that it feels weird not actually having it. And what the heck was that explosion? <laughs> Maybe some aliens stepping on something explosive. Because that happens sometimes. Where's the entrance to this building? Right here. Okay, so let's maybe move in that direction. Head now. Can we shred the mutant now? Thanks. There we go, that's better. You made up for the miss with a crit. Good job. Doesn't really matter who's going to kill it. We can kill it with Tobias. Because why not? Bye. You want some more? Alright, let's move on then. We can actually open the door. Where's the actual prisoner? Right here, on the left. And the cell door is on the other side. 
Okay, we'll just take the scenic route. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. Alright, let's move people and reload. And Eva, we can overwatch in case some group shows up. We are not done just yet. Alright, overwatch. I assume there's going to be a pod right here. What are all these explosions? That's a little bit weird. <laughs> okay, whatever. Oh, we can actually go through here to the left. Works for me. Let's be a little bit more aggressive. Can we open the door on this turn without dashing? No. Let's just do it like this. We always have the Mimic Beacon if this triggered something. We didn't trigger anything. Alright. Let's move in with everyone then. I don't think we'll run out of time, but if we can save one turn, we will. Alright, let's go, people. It should be safe to move in with everyone. But we'll be careful. What's the hack? Precision, 83%. I don't think we need that, and I don't okay. want to risk a failure. There's an amazing perk in Long War 2, which prevents negative effects from hacking failures. I really like that one. I kind of miss not having that in a regular campaign. Because that's so good. Okay, it looks clear. Where's our specialist? That would be... Thomas. He's too far away. I mean, we got 10 turns, we can just wait one more turn and try to get the rewards from hacking the cell door properly. Alright, we'll move into the room with everyone. Preferably into cover in case some enemies show up. Thomas. Alright, good enough. No, that's not exactly the tile that I wanted, but I suppose it will do. Alright, overwatch in case someone shows up. Yep, they are coming. Oh. Okay. That's three mutons. Well, two mutons and a fired starter. So that's basically a berserker version that breathes fire. It's pretty nasty. And it will also do it every time we hit it. So it's important we do as much damage with reaction shots as possible. Okay, nice. This thing is actually really dangerous once it gets close. Okay, it's down to seven. We can kill it with one shot, I think. To avoid damage. But then we also got the mutons. I think we can freeze both mutons. We can. Okay, this was actually a pretty nasty pod. Who can do maximum possible damage? Maybe we should move away with Tobias in case we fail to kill the fire starter. Yeah, let's do that. Like so. And who can do maximum possible damage? That would be Brian with the shotgun. This might not be a kill. Yeah, I'm actually thinking this will not be a kill. Let's find out, I guess. Yep, six damage. Not enough. Okay, it didn't actually do anything. I fought it well. Interesting. Maybe it doesn't do it every single time. You can't handle me. Yes, he definitely can't handle you, seeing how he's dead now. So, the mutons. Let's just freeze the mutons. That seems like our best option right now. Okay. Or can we just kill them? I don't think we can kill them, no. Not both of them, anyway. We'll just freeze them, it's fine. There is still one more group somewhere, and we don't know where exactly. Probably somewhere nearby. And now we need to hack the cell door, so that's Thomas's job. One hundred percent. That was the first option. Didn't catch what exactly it was. The soldier's hacking stat permanently increased by 20, guaranteed. Well, that's amazing. We will definitely take that. Okay, that's actually amazing. Looking good. There's the VIP. 
And let's start doing some damage to the mutons. That sounds like a good idea. Let's see. Well, we can hit it in the face. It should be safe to step outside. This will reveal quite a bit of the fog, so... Yeah, let's not step outside. We'll just throw a grenade. It's fine. There. And anyone else? We still got Chris. He can take a shot at the flanked muton. Is it dead? Yeah, I think it's dead. Nice. And that's our turn done. We got the VIP. Looking good. And where's the actual extraction zone? Right here. And reinforcements. As expected. Yes, Bradford, we Menace noticed. It's kind of hard not to. Alright, let's go outside. There's still one more pod somewhere, other than the reinforcements that are incoming. But let's kill the mutant first. And I guess we'll set up on Overwatch to handle the reinforcements. But first, let's kill that mutant. Let's see... Tobias... Yeah, he can kill it with a pistol. There's no need to waste lightning hands. One shot will do. RIP. And now we can move outside and use Overwatch. Let's see... Come on, people. That's another thing that's different in Long War 2. In Long War 2, you can't really just stand in the open like this and Overwatch, because enemy pods will have a chance to take aggressive actions against you. So it's a little bit risky doing it like this. Overwatch. Well, I guess we can move the VIP twice. So here they come. Codex and... what else? Some Advent guy. Didn't quite catch it. Okay, one damage with stock. I miss having stocks on multiple soldiers. You know, actual decent stocks and we found the other group. I don't think we're close enough to evac. So it looks like we'll have to kill them or handle them. Alright. Now that's a proper engagement. What, seven enemies? Anyone else? One more shot. Come on, Thomas. Nice, eight damage. I think we killed whatever that was. No, we did not. It was riot control with 16 health. That is a lot of health. Demolitionist, riot control. Oh, he's stunned now. Nice. So he's basically as good as dead. We definitely can't get out on this turn. So we'll have to kill at least some of these guys. Let's see, we got flashbang grenade on Thomas. So that's what he can do. Let's just fight them properly. The only problem is that we might get flanked. Depending on what exactly we'll do. Let's see, where's Brian? What if we use flesh against some of these guys closer to the extraction zone? We are not close enough to use it on them, okay. We do have seven more turns. We could just kill everything. Because that's the safest way to do it. Just kill them all. Now, this guy right here is stunned. We could attack the demolitionist, but this will not be enough damage unless we get a crit. We can kill Riot Control. Well, that guy is stunned. Yeah, we can't kill any of them with a melee attack because it will not do enough damage. Is there a better way of doing this? Not sure about that. Yeah, I think it's best if we kill this group inside the building because otherwise we will get flanked by at least some of these guys. There's no real way around it. We can also throw a Mimic Beacon. 
well, we might do that regardless. But first, let's see if we can kill them all. It will depend on how much damage we'll do and if we'll get any crits. Alright, let's problem. just move into the building. Give me a nice crit. Okay, 8 damage. Not quite enough for a kill, but that's fine. Tobias can kill the Lancer. Let's do this. That works. Oh, there are some explosives right here. Okay, that's not so good. That means we really have to kill them all. I wouldn't want that to blow up, whatever that is. Thomas is out of ammunition, so he could use a flashback grenade. Now, we still have to kill the Demolitionist and the Tech Commando. And Chris is the one with the Mimic Beacon. Can we actually kill them both? Hold on, can we get out with the VIP? Yes, we actually can, so let's do that. I don't want to risk the VIP getting killed, obviously. Alright, now. Let's see, we got Eva. We could try a grenade on the Tech Commando. This will also shred him. And then hopefully he will take falling damage. If we manage to blow up the roof. And then Brian could finish him off. Unfortunately, we will not be able to kill the Demolitionist. That's a bit of a problem. Well, unless I just go and hit him in the face and get a crit. But I just can't kill that guy, it's not going to happen. It's probably best if we use Mimic Beacon somewhere inside the building. Because the reinforcements aren't really threatening us all that much. Everyone is inside the building. They will not be able to take a shot at basically anyone in here. And we can use Mimic Beacon to counter the Demolitionist. So I guess that's what we'll do. But first, we need that grenade. Where can we stand to make it safe? In full cover, preferably. I guess we can stand over here. Or over here, that's even further away. Alright, that works. And we'll use the grenade. I normally don't use grenades on one single enemy, but in this case, it's definitely the best move. Now, we need the roof to blow up. There. I don't know if we'll be able to kill him. We need four more damage. We can do four more damage, right? I hope so. Well, yeah, Brian can do four damage, right? Also, stand in cover, preferably. It's not a granted hit, but if he hits, it will be a kill. Oh, great, we missed. Well, that's unfortunate. I should have used the grenade there. Well, that sucks a little bit. And I can't do it with Thomas. Alright, well, Mimic Beacon. And Thomas. I can't stay here, I need to move. Let's just move in. That was very unfortunate with that tech commando. Should have used melee or a grenade. Do we want to disorient them all? Might as well. You know, just in case. Here. I'm not too happy about leaving that tech commando alive. Are we there yet? Are you guys doing anything? <laughs> this is awkward. What's going on? Oh. That was a little bit weird. Not sure what happened. The animation bugged out. I have no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> we got a nice view of the Mimic Beacon. There, the Demolitionist is on the move. 
Okay. There goes the beacon. Wait, did the riot control take a shot? I think so. Also, close combat specialist. Nice. The riot control was supposed to be stunned, though. Well, we killed the tech commander with close command specialist. I love that ability. Codex is on Overwatch, that's rare. And we took free damage. Wait, light him up? Seriously? Okay. Yes, you're under fire. I noticed. You'll be fine. Six more turns. How much damage did we take? It's fine. So, we still have to kill both the Demolitionist and the Riot Control. I'm not too happy about that. Okay, Thomas can take a shot, he just needs to reload. One down. What about the Demolitionist? What's the best way to kill him? Probably with melee, but that's not enough to actually kill him. We'll need to do more damage with someone else. Can we actually do any more damage with anyone else? We kind of can't. I suppose we can throw a grenade to blow up his cover. That's the best way to do it. That's the only way to do it. But let's move a little bit first. Okay, let's just throw a grenade. It will do some damage and hopefully give us better line of sight. There we go, now we can kill him easily. And then handle the other group. Let's just make sure everyone has cover. Let's see. Where can we stand? I suppose we can stand over here. That cover doesn't fill me with confidence though. It really doesn't. Let's just stay inside the building. I like how that was only 81% chance to hit, but he's dead. Now, what about these guys? The Codex is on Overwatch, but we can flashbang them, at least two of them. I don't think we'll flashbang the Gatling Trooper or whatever he was called. It might also be better to save the flashbang grenade for the next turn. In fact, that is better. Save it for the next turn. We can take a shot. Yeah, 34%, that's just way too low. Let's play it defensively on this turn. We'll stay where we are, for the most part. Okay, let's play it defensively. We got six more turns. I would be playing more aggressively if I had less time, but we know we have enough time to evac, so we can afford to play it safe. And now we can throw a flashbang grenade, disorient them all, and we'll move in. The codex is still on overwatch, so I guess we'll just use the flashbang first. Now, they are a little bit far away, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to actually kill them, but we'll see what we can do. We do have run and gun, so that is an option. We can flank the Gatling Trooper. Let's do that. Right here. And we'll have nice full cover. 86%. He's down. So one down, two more to go. And that's a promotion for Brian, awesome. Let's see, what else can we do? Not a whole lot, actually. Yeah, not a whole lot. We can conceal Chris. And then use Shadow Strike on the next turn. Wait, he doesn't have Shadow Strike, does he? No, he doesn't. Thomas. Well, he's out of ammunition. Let's just dash, I suppose, into full cover. Tobias, yep, same story, he can't do a whole lot. I can't kill the Codex, unfortunately, which is a bit annoying. Is Chris the one with stock? He is. We can take a shot at the Shaman Lancer from the high ground. 
I assume there's no turret up here. Okay, looks safe. Let's take a shot at the trauma lancer. There, we actually hit him. Good job. We might be able to kill the trauma lancer. Maybe? Yeah, no. <laughs> we can't. I don't think so. Unless we hit him with a pistol. I suppose we might. 29%. Really low, but let's give it a shot regardless. Nope. Yeah, I wasn't really counting on that hitting, but you never know. One more. We actually killed him! Awesome. Good job, Tobias. And out of ammunition. Alright. There's no need to dash. Where can we move and then reload? That will involve keeping cover. Nowhere, really. I guess we can reload on the next turn. We still got four more turns. We have more than enough time. Let's see what he's going to do. It is disoriented. It will use Overwatch. Alright. Fine by me. Let's see. I guess we can just ignore Overwatch. It's still disoriented, so its chance to hit will be pretty low. Or we can break it with stock, but then it will clone, so perhaps that's not a very good idea. Yeah, let's just rush it with Brian, for example. What else can we do? Who has the most health? 12 health, but no ammunition, so we would have to use a pistol. Tobias has 7. Eva has 11. Let's just dash with Eva then. And we'll trigger Overwatch like that. It should be pretty low chance to hit. It was 29%. Yeah, like I said, very low. And now we can kill it, hopefully. First we'll use melee because that's almost a granted hit. And it's also stunned, nice. Okay. So now we can kill it. Let's just take a flanking shot with the pistol. It won't be amazing damage, but... At least we are flanking it. Oh yeah, dodged. Because that's a thing. Alright, what about Tobias? 46%. Can we even kill that stupid colleague right now on this turn? I got some dubs about that. 50% from the high ground. Yeah, one damage. Not amazing. Thomas, Thomas can't do anything because he's out of ammunition and he doesn't have combat protocol. Yeah, I really miss having combat protocol. <laughs> this is why I take it on pretty much every specialist ever. It's just so good in so many situations. But he's dead. Nine damage with the pistol. Yes, I see that. Good job. And now we can get out. It's fine, Bradford. Calm down. We were having a party with the aliens. But they couldn't handle us. And they lost control of the situation. And out we go. That was a fun mission. I enjoyed that last engagement. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. So, let's check out the promotions. Only two promotions. Brian, Killer Instinct, Blade Master, Lightning Reflexes. That is a pretty tough choice, but I tend to favor Blade Master. Because of the extra aim. Because getting granted hits when you take a risk to melee something is pretty damn important. Having said that, Killer Instinct is also amazing. And then we got Chris. Recon, Gun and Run and Scout's Watch. We could grab Gun and Run. The problem with Gun and Run is that you need to land the shot. Which isn't always possible. It's hard to get 100% chance to hit on any enemies with defense. 
or even on any enemies that you aren't very close to. What scouts watch again? Let's see. The rogue no longer has reaction fire penalties with overwatch and can crit, but can only watch over small regions. Let's take a gun and run. Alright, there we go. We got 20 intel. Excellent work, and we got a scientist. Efforts continue and intel the from the actual rewards. Alright, it looks good. So, what can we do here? Idle stuff as the proving ground. Let's see. Battlefield medicine, I guess we need that. We do. Alright, the battlefield medicine it is then. And I think that's that. Back to the bridge. Supply drop. And supplies from an event. Let's go grab the supply drop. Oh, is that a UFO? I think so. That means we might be getting Avenger defense soon. Yep, it's definitely a UFO hunter. Welcome, Anything Commander. interesting at the HQ? A Shinobi. 230 supplies. Do we need more Shinobis? Let's check our roster really quick. How many do we have? We got three Shinobis. We got two Shinobis in Captain rank. Yeah, I don't think we need a third one. If it was a different class, Welcome, then it would be worth it, probably. We can also get a scientist, but 250 supplies is a little bit much. Avenger Let's go get the supply drop. That UFO is a bit too close for my taste. We will get Avenger defense. However, sometimes you can actually dodge the UFO. I did that in my previous campaign. Twice. It was the first time I did it, which is how I found out it's actually possible to begin with. So, we'll go grab the supplies, I guess. We could also make contact with New Australia. We got 454 intel. That's a crap ton of intel. We don't really need to wait for a relay tower. We can also grab Avenger battlefield. Let's get course. that. In before it intercepts us. Not yet, apparently. Okay. Oh, is it gone? I can't see it, and no, it's still there. Interception imminent. <laughs> well, we might still avoid it. Let's see. I don't think we'll avoid it. All right, then. Well, you know what Chris will be doing. I was wondering which one of us will end up doing Avenger defense. It's going to be Chris. Spike is our only chance of getting out of here. We can't let the aliens take this ship. We're going down, Commander. So, you know what Chris will be doing. <laughs> Let's set up the squad, shall we? Let's see. Yeah, most of our best soldiers are not wounded. The first wounded person is Amir. So, Daniel, Conrad, Sorin, Jose. I don't 
think we need two shinobis, but we can get two shinobis. Anyway, Pete. And Benjamin. I guess that will do. What do we have? Assault, Shinobi, Specialist, Rogue, Ranger, Grenadier. Yeah, that's fine. And make utility items available. Let's see. Who's going to get what? First of all, Daniel. Medkit. And Skulljack. Like so. Alright. Didn't she have her own weapon? Yeah, she definitely did. Let's see, Daniel's weapon, right here. Okay. That's Daniel done. Next, we got Conrad. Conrad definitely had his weapon. Yep, there it is. And what else? Battle scanner for Conrad, and suppose we could give him a Mimic Beacon. Yeah, not that, Mimic Beacon. Alright, so that's Conrad. Next, Jose. He has his weapon already. Oh yeah, we do have an EXO suit. How do we want to use that on? Either a Ranger or maybe a Grenadier. Benjamin, what's their base health? Benjamin has 7. Jose has 5. Let's use it on Jose, because he has very low base health, and this will help his survivability. We only have the rocket launcher, and blue screen rounds on Jose, since he can take two shots per turn. Okay, looks good. He had his weapon, right? Yep. Right, next. We got Benjamin. He needs his weapon first, like so. He didn't have any special grenade launcher. Two frost bombs. And maybe EMP grenade on Benjamin. Sure. And nano scale vest. Okay. Next up we got Soren. Let's see. Who used the hunter's axe? Wasn't it Soren? I'm pretty sure it was Soren, so here you go. And what else? Nanoscale vest? Well, he's a shinobi, so he can use the extra health, I suppose. Plasma grenade. And... Pete. Let's see. Looks like he has everything he needs. Alright, that's it then. So, I actually need to launch the mission, because I can't leave this screen. Enemy unknown, interesting. Well, this will be fun. But I'm going to launch the mission because I can't leave the screen and make a save. So then send it to Chris. I need to actually start the mission. Alright, so I'm going to pass the save to Chris. Enjoy Avenger Defense, Chris. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time.